Well, good evening from ITV Atlanta, and this is Sports Night, at least part of it, and this is Woo. a soccer ball, but we covered Hot Atlanta Volleyball, and you covered some ladies football. Yes, the Georgia women's flag football team, and they're awesome ladies. They know how to handle the football, let me tell you. Better than you. Much better than me, but I, I got excited about it. What else tonight? In Berlin, Jim Grimsley's new play. We'll interview him and go see the play. It was great. That's at Seven Stages. Seven Stages. And he's the author of Dream Boys. Yes, he is. Another great play. Yeah. What else? We also went to Out on Film, the local gay and lesbian film festival. There we saw some great movies. We also saw a couple of pieces on Queer as Folk. Then we went to Burkhart's and filmed with Showtime. Uh, the after party there. And so Showtime's going to be carrying the American version of Queer as Folk. In yeah beginning in December. Yes, yeah, we'll see what that's like. Really? We'll have GLAAD Fairness Awards as IBM and Turnout, Turner Broadcasting Gay and Lesbian Group were awarded. And we want to welcome our new friends in Savannah. We were down there for their first Gay Fest and uh, now we've got Out TV Savannah. Yeah. Yay. The first show. Welcome Yay. Savannah. Yeah, welcome guys. Savannah. How do we get into this show? You go out for a pass. Okay, I'm going. Ready? Okay, go. Cut! Okay. Club One, voted Savannah's number one dance club. At 1 Jefferson Street, downtown Savannah. Come see us. We're hot. Georgia Equality Project and OutTV Atlanta remind Georgia gay voters, get registered no later than October 9th. Call the Georgia Secretary of State's office or register online, www.voter.com. Emerge on National Coming Out Day. Engage with gay and lesbian business leaders and celebrate their contributions to our community. Empower yourself as Walter Schubert shares his story of coming out on Wall Street and building the leading gay financial site, GFN.com. Hi, I'm Joey. We're on the sidelines with two star players of the Georgia Women's Football League. What is your name? Danae Cornett. And what is yours? Mashonda Gilmore. Now, both of you are co-commissioners? Yes, we are. What does that mean exactly? We help to organize and put together uh, the organization prior to uh, the season starting. And during the season, we make sure that everything runs smoothly and, and help to prepare for the next season. Today is the second game of this, this season, right? Yes, it is. And how many more games do you have? We have about six more regular season games. And then Piedmont Park is where you practice every Saturday? Yeah, every Saturday we practice at Piedmont Park, 1 o'clock, uh, directly in front of the mill. How long have you been interested in football? Oh, ever since I've been small. I have an older brother, so we've been always in the sport, so I always loved the game. Great. Energy lightning. Number one. Hut, hut. We are watching these fabulous ladies play flag football, and the, the league that you're on is the Georgia... Is Georgia Women's Flag Football League. Right, and how long have you played? This is my first season. I'm just a rookie. Okay. So, no tackling involved, just, just no, the flag. No tackling. Uh, shadow blocking is what they call it, and just pulling off the flags for the down. Hotlanta Volleyball was in full action again this week, as it is every Tuesday and Friday evenings at various area gyms, and on Sundays in Piedmont Park, weather permitting. Hotlanta Volleyball, a co-ed organization begun in the 1980s, now has 150 area members. It conducts leagues and open play year-round, and sponsors a national tournament once a year, an event that draws up to 40 to 50 teams from all over the U.S. Find out more about Hot Atlanta Volleyball at its website, www.hotlantavolleyball, all one word, dot org. This is Rob Martin reporting for OutTV Atlanta.
We're here with Bobby Box, who's associate producer of the Center for Puppetry Arts. Thanks for having us here, and how are you doing? Oh, doing great, and thanks for coming here. So what do you do here? Uh, I'm the associate producer, which means uh, I serve on artistic committees that uh, uh, plan what shows we're going to be doing and which companies to invite from all over the world. I also write and direct a lot of the shows here, both for adults and for kids. Will you tell us a little bit about the New Direction series? Uh, yes, uh, the New Direction series is a series that we have uh, primar primarily for adults. Uh, some shows are appropriate for 12 and up, some are appropriate for 18 and up. Uh, and that's in our publicity. Uh, you can always check and see which ones those are. Our first show of this season uh, for our New Direction series is Kaidan. It's uh, directed by Ping Chong of New York City, famous uh, performance artist. And uh, that's the show that you'll be seeing parts of today. Uh, that show will be followed by Account Me Puppet, a uh, group coming down from Cincinnati in September. And then in October, we have a really great uh, thing planned for Halloween. It's called XP Terror. It's a variation on our exper experimental puppet theater. And it's uh, all Halloween themed this year using cin the center's artists as well as artists from around Atlanta. Promises to be a great Halloween party. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for having us here. Thank you very much. And uh, if you'd like more information about these shows and others that we have in our New Direction series, you can just go to www.puppet.org. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I'm attorney Kathy Alterman. I have practiced law in courts all over the state of Georgia, and I understand your particular issues. Let me fight your battles for you. Call me at 404-688-8400. I will fight for you. Proud Realty, because there's no place like home. Whether you're buying, selling, renting, or relocating, Proud Realty has you covered. We're nationally recognized for our unique service to the gay and lesbian community. Call us at 404-352-5570 or visit our website at proudrealty.com. Hair with Attitude, Without the Attitude, Salon 2000. I'm here with Harley Gould and Joe Thomas. We're here at the closing party. And you guys are patrons and volunteers, right? That's correct. That's right. And uh, is this your first out on film? Uh, not mine. I've been doing this for quite a number of years. I've done pre-screening and uh, oh, almost anything they need I do for the film festival. So I've been doing this for... Uh, probably eight or nine years now, so. Um, good festival though, we had a lot of really good films. We were in a new space, and I think it was a better space. Um, overall, I think it was a very successful film festival. And I, I just really enjoyed the whole entire time of working with the festival. I think uh, Regal was just absolutely wonderful to us. We almost didn't even have the festival, and for everything to have turned out the way that it did, I, I just, I, I, I can't be any more pleased. I'm pleased to have helped a little bit, you know, to this this past year to do it. I think uh, uh, Genevieve and them have just done a great job. And Jack, uh, the rest of them that have worked so hard all year, really to pull this off. Uh, I think it was it was really great that that we moved to even a bigger theater, and and we still had to turn people away, which is incredible. The week-long 13th annual Atlanta Gay and Lesbian Film Festival ended October 1st after 17 screenings at Regal Cinemas Hollywood 24. Following out on film Saturday evening showing of Queer as Folk 2, Burkhardt's Pub at Ansley Square hosted Showtime, which will air the American version beginning December 3rd. The U.S. adaptation of Queer as Folk, the highly controversial and critically acclaimed British series, is now in production in Toronto. Featured as the romantic and sexual liaison between a 29-year-old man and a 17-year-old boy. Producers promise the sex scenes will be more explicit than anything now being seen on American cable television. Showtime interviewed Burkhardt patrons who attended the Out on Film presentation. I think it will be well received. This is Leanne Reed from Out TV Atlanta, and I'm here with seasoned novelist and playwright Jim Grimsley at the beginning of his new play in Berlin. Hi. Hi, thanks for speaking with us. Oh, it's wonderful too. Yeah. And what's your new play about? 
Um, in Berlin is the story of a gay man in his middle years who feels himself tiring, especially tiring sexually. He's had a lot of sex in his life. And instead of giving in to age and going ahead and settling down into the mellowness of that period, he decides he'll push things a little further. So he takes a trip to Berlin to explore S&M, to explore leather sex, and the notion of pain for pleasure. I had had the notion of a writing a play called In Berlin for a long time, and I knew it had something to do with bondage, because I kept writing this scene where one person had another person captive in a hotel room in Berlin. <clears throat> and that didn't work, but it set me to thinking about what that scenario was about, the bondage that was implied in it. And so I went off and did some research. I went to a couple of studios and saw what they did and saw how the work was done and was really affected by it because it didn't look like what I thought it would look like. It was not ugly or cruel or nasty. It was actually very beautiful and dance-like and tender. And the notion that both of these parties, the flogger and the floggy, had agreed to be there and were getting this wonderful pleasure out of this act that I found somewhat alien. I needed to take an audience through at least that first experience to, to show them those ideas, to show them that, you know, sex and pleasure come from more places than we think about. So is it really like that in Berlin, they have an underground? They, they have an underground in many cities. I mean, there's an, there's an underground leather scene here. It's not really underground. That world is very ritualized and stylized, the world of leather, be it heterosexual leather or gay leather. Um, and each of those worlds are different. They have their own different rules, but they have some rules that they share in common. It's absolutely fascinating to learn about it. I thought I had learned a lot, and then Master Hines came in and started explaining <laughs> even more. You know, there is something creepy about hearing a person refer to another person as his slave. Yeah. And that person being right there agreeing with it. It's, yeah, it's right. Idea. It tells you you're in a different space, a different headset. It's a wonderful cast. I don't think I've ever had a better cast for a play. I was worried about the cast. I mean, they've had to learn a lot of things that probably will be of no <laughs> use to them. <laughs> I mean, the nights when the master from the sanctuary, Master Hines, came and taught them to flog one another, it was really hilarious. <laughs> and it turned out that, of course, the best flogger in the bunch was the former cheerleader. Really? She had the wrist action from doing oh, the yeah. <laughs> so She could just flog for days. Really? <laughs> she was really good. How long is it going to play here? Well, We'll be running until November 5th, I think. Okay, yeah, great. First weekend in, in November. So I guess we're going to go and watch it now. Everybody's ready. Let's go inside. They've got the whips. Oh, the whips are ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
and they will raise, like I said, in excess of about about 60 to 75 percent of the entire funds are made okay. through teens. Um, the rest of the funds are raised through individual walkers. Cool. Um, this is all our actually. This is our our major um, in kind page. This is where every every person who makes a donation to the walk gets a star, um, and you'll see you know fifteen thousand balance bars. Um, I see two weekend rooms at a hotel. Is that like a giveaway or something? Yeah, or is, they, they can be used for a variety of different things. They can be used for giveaways. They can be used for um, uh, if we need people to come into town to support with the walk. Um, the, in event fifteen thousand people, you need a large staff to come in for the weekend. Right. Um, so we will bring in people from other cities as well. Um, to assist us in, in making the walk happen. That's great. Um, so some, some, some of the in-kind stuff goes like that as well. Um, cool. And uh, some of our major sponsors assist us in that as well. Delta provides us with some airline tickets to bring people in. Um, and it's, it's, it's about, uh, I mean, the, the, whole, the whole walk is about raising awareness. Right. Um, and, and raising funds, and that's what we're about. What about volunteers? Anybody who, who might be watching the show that wants to possibly give their time or whatever, what, Absolutely. what would they need to do? Um, you can either just come by the office or give us a call. Um, our phone number is 404-876-WALK. WALK. 404-876-9255. Um, okay. Um, and they can come by the office, give us a call. We will. We we are actually in great, not in great need, but we are in need of a DO, they have event volunteers. Right. Um, we need everyone from people handing out popsicles at the checkpoints to laying cones to security. You name it, give us a call. We've got a special talent for you. We'll ask you to do it. I want to thank you, uh, Galen Greenlaw, for having us here at Out TV Atlanta. And we, Out TV Atlanta, will be at AIDS Walk Atlanta October 15th covering uh, what is going on there. And we hope to see you there. This day marks a very special day. Not only are we honoring two very deserving recipients, IBM and Turnout, but also it highlights GLAD's continuing commitment to the Southeast and the grassroots work that we're doing here. My role at GLAD is to work with the television stations, the radio stations, newspapers, magazines here in the Southeast to help them understand how to report on lesbian and gay issues and how to do that in a fair and accurate and inclusive manner. We're media advocates, and our work is rooted in a really simple assumption, that attitudes and opinions are shaped a lot long time before people walk into voting booths or before judges make key decisions in courtrooms, that each of us is shaped in a very profound way by the cultural influences around us. We're not a big organization in the larger scheme of things. We have six offices, 35 people. But we've been able to make a whole hell of a lot of noise. We've had a strong message, and we've used the media to its best advantage to get it out there. Because Matt's last few minutes of consciousness on Earth may have been hell. His family and friends want more than ever to say their farewells to him in a peaceful, dignified, and loving manner. The employee members of Turnout have helped to shape our community's outlook, its policies, and its continuing efforts towards unity through diversity among its employees and the respective communities at the local, national, and international levels. I've been with Turner Broadcasting for 10 years now, and the changes that I've seen over the last decade uh, with the company have been wonderfully positive. This is America. There is no them. There is only us. Ladies and gentlemen, accepting the GLAD Fairness Award for IBM, Ms. Claudia Woody. We thank you for the, the award, it says to us and IBM that we're beginning to do some of the right things. We're beginning to make the workplace a really good place for, for all of our employees. We still have work to do to make sure that as we level that playing field, that your gay and lesbian teammates are not running the 100 meter hurdles when everybody else is just running the 100 meter dash.
these are the men who are here to represent Turn Out, and that is the Gay and Lesbian Employment Group at Turner Broadcasting. Can you tell me about Turn Out? Uh, well, um, as you mentioned, we're the Gay and Lesbian Employee Group at Turner Broadcasting. Uh, we spend most of our time uh, networking, uh, both socially and professionally, uh, with all of our brothers and sisters in the Turner family. Uh, we work very closely with uh, the employees and the uh, managers at Turner, uh, dealing with gay and lesbian issues. I'm here with Claudia Woody from IBM, who's here to accept their award. Hello, thanks for taking time out to speak with us today. Sure, sure, you're welcome. We're delighted to be here. So wasn't IBM one of the first companies to actually have a domestic partnership? One of the first big companies, yes. Uh, we took, took the leadership there because it was the right thing to do. We were definitely a very positive role model for any other company. Well, we think so. Uh, IBM's a great company. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. All right. Pride Realty, because there's no place like home. Whether you're buying, selling, renting, or relocating, Pride Realty has you covered. We're nationally recognized for our unique service to the gay and lesbian community. Call us at 404-352-5570 or visit our website at pridealty.com. Here with Attitude. Without the Attitude, Salon 2000. Hello, I'm attorney Kathy Alterman. I have practiced law in courts all over the state of Georgia and I understand your particular issues. Let me fight your battles for you. Call me at 404-688-8400. I will fight for you. Hi, I'm Joey Wills, and I'm here at Borders Books and Music here in Midtown on Ponce de Leon, and I have the pleasure of being here with Mark Etheridge and Dean Wong, known as Mark and Dean. Now, you guys are singers, songwriters, right? And musicians as well. Um, how long have you been performing? It's been, we've been performing almost since we met as a couple, which was a little over four years ago. Started writing music together um, through the experience of our relationship, and Mark started composing it. We started singing it. Our first was at 1996 Gay Pride in San Francisco, singing for the opening ceremonies there. And then it's just been an evolution since then. We released the first CD two years ago, and then followed up immediately a year after with the second CD. The second CD is titled Man of My Dreams. That is so nice. And can you tell me what type of music is on here? What can we expect from this CD? Um, did you want to I would say it's more electronic. Um, it still fits into the pop um, genre, but it has a lot of electronic and uh, retro 60s and 70s influences. Is there one song on here that you're getting more reaction from, from your audience that seem to enjoy? You know, um, we used to think so. We used to think we'd be able to pinpoint the song that people would um, be most attracted to and it changes so dramatically. One song on this CD in particular that people really identify with is a song called Oil and Water. And it deals with hateful words or just words in general and how they affect us. And you know, um, that song was written after um, a couple of run-ins with um, uh, Reverend Fred Phelps, and I use that term loosely. But um, of course, he is famous for his um, God hates bag signs. Yeah. And he showed up at several events in San Francisco that we were participating in at the time. And I think the first time I saw those signs being held by um, his very small group of people, um, it was the first time I really saw what hate was in a physical um, body. And um, I, I wrote that song because it, it just, I realized that where love exists, there can't be hate. And where hate exists, there can't be love. And I also wrote that song because I realized that words are very, very powerful. Those words cut through people like a knife. Yeah. You know, there's that expression kids use all the time, sticks and stones can break your bones, but words will never hurt you. That's not true. And young people who have been called faggot and fag and all of the sissy names that go along with that are very affected by the words that they hear. Um, and so that's what that song is about. And that song seems to have an impact with everybody who hears it. Everybody can relate to those words that kind of scared them from even coming out of the closet. Yeah. With the release of their second uh, album, me. Man of My Dreams, Mark and Dean have become seasoned performers and are reaching new heights, both musically and inspirationally. Their music is used as a vehicle to affirm the lives of gays and lesbians and to proclaim liberation for the community. 
By infusing electronic, drum and bass, and disco, Mark and Dean inspire a collage of catchy and hit mixes with a decidedly Europop influence. To learn more about Mark and Dean, please visit their website at www.markanddean.com. Well, that was our sportiest show to date, wasn't it? Wasn't it? I loved it. <laughs> and next week we're going to be at the United States uh, Conference on AIDS, so where we had 3,000 attendees at the Hyatt Regency this week. Yeah, that's A very amazing. important conference because of the minority focus this time. Yeah. We're also going to a benefit golf tournament with uh, GEP and Fourth Tuesday. They're raising some money for a scholarship fund. And I have lots of practice with the golfing, and uh -huh. I want you to practice your putting a little bit. Do you know a putter from a... I sure do, but I'm going to be sitting on the side drinking some beer, so that's my practice. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a Saturday. Right. Uh, what else? Oh, I spoke with Cleve Jones. Oh, he yeah. was a very amazing man. He started the AIDS quilt. He wrote a new book, Stitching a Revolution. And he's a very uh, strong activist. All right. Well, that's two weeks in a row we've had these strong national aid uh, activist personalities. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? That's really? what we need more of that influence here in Atlanta. Sure do. We also go to the Lesbian Cancer Initiative Garden Party. It's our annual fundraiser, so right. that'll be fun. That'll be good. And we want to remind you about OutTV Atlanta's website. Be sure to tune in, and you Savannah folks, you particularly tune in because we want to hear back from you about how it's going down there. Out That's www.outtvatlanta.com. <laughs> I was going to say the same name. So we'll see you next week. <laughs> bye bye. Thursday at 8.30. Bye.